better place than this. So today we celebrate the finest football facilities that exist in the United States of America. Oh my God, it was crazy. I just walked in and I just started smiling. I mean, it was nothing short of special. Like, I've never seen anything like that in my life. The season starts right now, boys. Let's go. One, two, three. Hey. It is his first as an Aggie, John Day Walker. Touchdown, Texas A&M. It's a beautiful Saturday here at Kyle Field. I want y'all to feel this today, man. Trust yourself right now. Let me go have fun. It's crazy. I can't get used to it. I still don't think it's really hit me that much. But um, I mean, every Saturday getting to run out on the field and carry that flag, it means more to me than, you know, anything that I could ever dreamed of growing up. So, uh, yeah, it's been pretty wild. Right? I represent this university. I'm out there to, you know, get them involved in the game and also go make plays on the field. So, you know, you kind of feel invincible once you put that 12 on. There's not really a feeling like it. Of course, we have the statue of DK Gill right behind That's pretty cool. There is no tradition like the 12th man, and its heritage has been entrusted to Sam Matthews. Life has taken him to all corners of the world, but he recognized the opportunity of a lifetime awaited in Aggieland. I was born in California, moved to Okinawa, Japan. My dad was a Marine for 21 years, so moved to Japan for six years, then moved to North Carolina, and then moved uh, to League City, Texas. League City Cowboys. When we first moved to Texas from Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, got him started in Pee Wee football, um, and he was he was a star from the from the day he first started playing. He was always good. He was the quarterback right off the bat, and was always the quarterback. I fell in love with the sport at a young age. And going through high school, you know, it's Friday Night Lights. You never have another game like that again. So obviously I was hoping to maybe pull some D1 offers, get opportunities to go play at the next level. And that just never came. I got some D2, D3, JUCO offers. Out of high school, he ended up taking a scholarship at Harding University in Arkansas for quarterback. I went there in Arkansas, redshirted my first year, ended up leaving. I wasn't that big a fan of Arkansas. I wanted to come back home to Texas. He loved a and I mean, since he was little. In 2009, I came to a game. My dad stumbles across some tickets for A&M Baylor, I want to say, and uh, I just fell in love with the atmosphere, and that was something that I couldn't shake. This is where he always wanted to be, so he just decided, you know, he he wasn't happy. He wanted to be, you know, you've got one shot. He wanted to come back here. Ended up at Blinn Bryan for a year to get the credits. Um, got into A&M, and that's when COVID hit, and he had to just wait. I didn't get the opportunity to walk on there. So finally, spring of 2021 comes and I get the opportunity to walk on. And He knew what he wanted to do and he's worked really hard. You've got one shot. If this is what you want to do, then do it. And, and he has. They recognize some of the things that I can bring to the table. Got my name thrown around on some special teams depth charts. That in turn has fully given me the opportunity to be 12th man. I don't think without special teams that I'd be in the position I am today. What you're willing to do as far as whether it's am I a starter on something or I go willing to do everything else on the team to be wherever and Sam does has done that his whole career here. I don't even know if I can put it into words. It's just like it was the phone call where everything that he had dreamed for and worked for like were validated. When you give it to him, you didn't have to say a word. He already knew it. He wanted to be the 12th man. There was other guys, a bunch of guys did. He wants that and he understands what that means and what who he's representing from the past and what he has to carry to the future. I mean, there's nobody who understands the history of A&M and means more than it does the same. I had about 300 text message notifications that I had to scroll through after uh, I had gotten out of practice that day. Um, calling everybody, they were ecstatic. I have the best support system around me. There's no words. No. There's no words. We told him to follow his dream. He did. 
to see your kid do what he's always wanted to, it's it's just awesome. Yep. He achieved that dream. I love watching him with the flag run out, go over to the student section side, wave the flag, get everybody pumped up. It's, it's incredible. It's exhilarating. And they push me to be, you know, the best man I can be on and off the field. Um, but yeah, they motivate me and it was an emotional time for sure. And I, I was just glad to be able to call everybody and let them know that what I'd been working for finally paid off and they were so happy for me. Eastwood Towers, citation 12 Alpha Mike, uh, visual 17. Station 12 Alpha Mike, if you like, you can take it straight to the numbers for me, runway 17, you're clear to land. 12 Alpha Mike, coming in. Saturday is approaching at AM, and everyone's invited this weekend. But plenty of planning takes place to make a party this size run smoothly. Good morning, welcome. Our uh, first of back-to-back uh, -back, uh, football games this season and another set coming up in November. Game time is 11.07, uh, uh, exactly. Um, entries open uh, this time at 9.30 in the morning. This is one of those games where uh, we will still see our crowd coming in uh, as late as 11.30, 11.45 to get to the good street. That just what happened on the 11 a.m. game regardless of opponent. So Thursday's a big day for us here. Thursday mornings, we will have a stakeholders meeting that could have attendance upwards of 125 people, ranging from every possible imaginable department in the university, plus many community stakeholders, state stakeholders, and federal stakeholders are all in there for, essentially it's our pregame, our last pregame operational meeting. Game days in College Station are incredibly unique. They happen seven times a year, and those are the seven biggest days that you will see in our city for the entire year. So numbers-wise, with what's already here, I know the population for College Station right now, it's right around 124,000. And then you have Bryan, I believe it's around 75,000, so we're at 200. Caulfield holds 100,000, but some of those are local. And so you can probably estimate that 60 to 70 of those are traveling into town. And then I've heard another 10 to 20,000 come tailgate and never even go into the game. So all those numbers we're looking at, it's probably 100,000 increase on every game weekend. Things can get hectic. You know, uh, our agency, along with just about every law enforcement agency within Brazos County, including the federal agencies and Department of Public Safety, are all here to make this a safe place to enjoy all the festivities and then hopefully get you safely back on the road back home. Getting everyone out of the area in a timely manner is quite a task. Fortunately, we have a traffic, very extensive traffic control plan that's been developed over the last 20 years and we keep adding on to it every year. We've tweaked with certain timing on certain signals, you know, on what length of time we'll give one direction and how much we give the other. We've had new intersections come online and so we're kind of playing what's best with them. But besides the traffic, we also have pedestrians that we have to account for. Um, there's a very large group of pedestrians that need to walk to their vehicles or just walking to the public transit or even just walking back to their house. Right around Kyle Field, we've implemented some pedestrian safety closures that go into effect four hours before the game and are there to an hour to two hours after the game in order to make sure that people can, once they leave the stadium, they can get back to their cars and then we try to push the cars away from stadi the stadium area in each different direction so that that way people can get out smoothly and then we can open up the streets uh, back to the community as quickly as possible. The Pulse Texas A&M Football is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics, and ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M Athletics. When SEC play begins, plenty of eyes will turn towards the matchup. There's no shortage of interest in this conference. It's not just the nation's best, it's America's most popular, too. Hey, man, love, trust, and believe in each other. We put the work in, we've studied for the test, man. Love, trust, and believe. 
toughness, effort, discipline, and pride, and you're great to do it all night, man. It ain't about them. It's about us. Make sure my eyes are right. Fly around and play. Got me? Fly around and play. Shoot your shot. Come on, get in here. Get in here. Lock in. Understand what you're here for. Understand the objective of what you're trying to copy. Don't put your ego in front of the team's ego. Understand what we're trying to do. Play smart, aggressive, intelligent football. But you're physical, violent, and you to echo the whistle, baby. And have fun doing it. Turn it loose. Turn it loose. Be what you can be. Be walking on eggshells. Change the narrative. Change what you do. Handle your business. Be what you can be, and don't be scared to be it. Howdy, Ags, and welcome to Kyle Field. And after three non-conference games, it's the SEC portion of the schedule. Into College Station roll the Auburn Tigers. It's the Aggies and the Tigers as we open SEC play. Fake to Owens. Wigman out of the backfield. Owens makes a man miss at the 40, 35-30 in front of the Aggie sideline. Ruben Owens, first down gain and more. Connor rolls to his right and is sacked back at the 33-yard line. Coverage by Auburn. This is just shy of 52. The snap from Graham is good. The hold is good. The kick is also good. 3-0 Texas A&M. Nate Thorne is the quarterback. Jarquez Hunter is the running back to his right. And he's hit in the backfield and tackled for loss right off the bat. A loss of three. Empty backfield for Thorne who runs right up the middle and he's hit from behind and then swarmed. He still hasn't gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Edger and Cooper on that tackle. Pressure from the backside. Pass incomplete. Too high for Javarius Johnson. And it's a three and out for this Aggie defense. On a second and 11. Le'Veon fights his way through across the Midfield 45 40, heading towards the Aggie sideline, left side, inside the 25 yard line. The patience and acceleration of Le'Veon Moss. Wigman has to get rid of it quickly, does to Anaya Smith. He's at the 11 yard line. It's a first down gain, and the Aggies in the red zone. In the first half, AM is moving the ball, but a couple of good drives does allow. They're up, but not quite comfortably. These games come down to who makes plays. The Aggie defense takes their cue. Now, you know what? I'm going to tell you this. They may look at this because on the official play-by-play, -play, they're calling it a pass to him. So was the lateral possibly forward? It is going under review, it looks like. If it's an incomplete pass, none of this occurs. Unfortunately, what looked like the biggest play of the game gets erased. But playing in this league, adversity is bound to strike. It's up to the Aggies to strike right back. A great response softens the blow, but the bruising physical style of the SEC is still on display. So much so, it gets to Connor Wigman, who has to exit with an injury. Auburn gets a late second quarter field goal. It's an uneasy feeling. Looms over Kyle Field. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is presented by 44 Farms, the official beef of Texas A&M Athletics. And ABC Home and Commercial Services, official pest control partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Have energy, have juice, man. You guys got me. All right, I need, I need to feel that from you, man. Let's feel it from each other. We made that promise in obligation one of them, did we not? Okay, let's live up our promise. It's a full 60 minutes, wherever the hell it takes, okay? The thing that's killing us the most We've had one successful play on first and ten right now. Okay, so we've got to go make plays on first and ten. And then we got to take a few shots. All right, take a few shots. But mostly two center. All right, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and believe in that guy next to you. All right, and it's up to us to go take it over. Go take it over. Go find out about yourself right here. Defense doing a hell of a job. Keep they don't score, we win. You understand? Are you willing to take no for an answer? I ask you that. You got to check yourself. You fake or not? What you got in you? 
All you got it. You have the ability to focus one play at a time, every damn time. That's what it gets down to. Your man here is being challenged right now. It's about execution. It ain't about fancy execution. Doing your job and willing to date, not take no for an answer. Who are we? Who are we? That's what we got to find out. It's in you. Turn it loose. Quit thinking and worrying and play and trust. You have the best feeling of your life. This is what ball's about, man. Test you. All right? So now, that's a half. You dominate this half. Find the inches and eliminate theirs. They got it coming out. We got to cover. We got to get stopped. Then we got to come out and take it and score. And then score again. We get ahead. Our defense is playing like hell. And offense, we're moving it. It's us. Poise, execution. And get some tempo and get some urgency in what you're doing. Love, trust, and believe, man. You guys got to get yourself over the hump. There's a hell of a football team in here. This is where you grow and find out. This is it. You got me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go have some fun right here. One play at a time. Do what we do. Believe right here. Believe right here. Believe right here. One, two, three. Believe. Three receivers on the right side. It's a handoff. Jarquez, Hunter, and nothing there. Thorne is sacked. Six sack for the Aggies. And Walter Nolan in on this one. They should get great field position. Johnson, the left-hander, fires complete. His first pass of the second half. And the shotgun completes. He's got his tight end. How about this? First time, Johnson to Johnson. Max to Jake. Max rolls left. Has a lot of room. Will take it. Upended first down. Sales out of bounds. That guy wants to win. I tell you what. Fake the handoff. Roll to the left. Wide open. Jake Johnson. Dives. Touchdown, Jake. Touchdown, Aggies. Johnson to Johnson for six. Now that's Aggie football. And he's wrestled down by Isaiah Riggs, maybe a yard. Third nine from around 26 yard line. Rolling to his left. He's going to run, undercut, 25 yard line. Sailing in to make that tackle. Chris Russell Jr. Le'Veon, oh, he puts his head down and pushes that pile. He's got the first down. A lot of time. Wide open, Anias. To the 37 yard line. Max time pocket. He's going deep down the middle of the field, taking a shot. Touchdown! What a catch, Evan Stewart! E. Stew, baby! Great catch! Amen! A perfect throw for Max Johnson on the go round. 37 yards. Max takes a shot and finds Evan Stewart, and the Aggies have a 19 to 3 lead. Slings him down at the line of scrimmage, and that is all. I love that they're gang tackling. I mean, one guy will get him slowed down, and then he gets a lot of help from his friends. Ashford looks that way. Pressure. Hit. Sacks. Cool. The Aggie defense has the Tigers by the tail. The offense continues to move the ball. However, a couple unlucky penalties and an untimely turnover prove quite costly. Another response is required. Ashford looks that way, sends it that way. DeBerry's there, jump ball, DeBerry dives, incomplete. Here comes Bryce Anderson. They got Ashford back at the 35-yard line, their seventh sack. Looks back to the left, complete. And at the 45, they lost two yards on that tackle by Malik Silla. Exactly what the Aggie needs. Daniel, second level, 30, 35, 40, back to the middle of the field, midfield, 45, and gets the rabbit tackle, he leaps over him, 20, 15, 10, Amari to the three, that's an explosive play, 79 yard gain, Amari Daniels, give Le'Veon right side, cuts back inside, Le'Veon, Amari, touchdown, 
Congratulations. There's no such thing as bad wins, guys. No such thing as bad wins. There's some good wins. Now, I told you at halftime, you had to find out about yourself a little bit. You're not there the second half and you found out about yourself. You went out there and got defense. You just kept playing lights out. Defense, you were outstanding, man. You were outstanding. And here's the other thing. What I love the most, you played, you played with passion, but you played with intelligence. You didn't let your emotions take over and get frustrated on defense. And when they did make plays, you stood right back up. The, the, up front, I mean, the pressure on the quarterback, I don't know what we had, six, eight, ten sacks, I don't know what the hell it was. Hell yeah. <laughs> but hey, you got effective play. You got, and you played the run, and they popped it, then you got guys on the ground. Very proud of you guys, offensively. Now, you come out hot, man. What we talked about, we come out hot, we executed. But what we talked about, you got to finish those drives in the red zone. When you kick those field goals, all of a sudden you're dominating the game. You look up, you're up six nothing. One play on the other side, they give it up. You know what I'm saying? We got to finish that. Defense held us out of there. But then the second half, we come right out. Bang, bang, two touchdowns. Max, you did a great job of stepping up. Yes, 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 yes. Listen, guys. And he, listen, you guys talk about playing time. You guys talk about everybody wants to play. We want to play everybody. Sometimes we got to make we make decisions. We, got, we had a quarterback. We made a decision. Max took that decision, said, Coach, I'll be ready when I'm called, and he did, and what we do? We can go win a championship. Like I said, we've got two great quarterbacks on this football team. Yes, 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 yes. And now we ran. We got the run in the second half, we got the running game going. Great job by four. You guys broke it. Once they got back in it, and then we had to put it away running, we got the running game going. We got some plays made. Listen, we got the ball turned over too. The big deal. I'm gonna give it to you a hundred more times, buddy. You're one hell of a player, and you made a bunch of good runs. You're gonna get it a hundred more times. Don't worry about that. That's part of the game. Many times you're gonna carry it in your career. You're gonna don't let that go, man. Let that go. Proud of you. You got you made some great runs in that game. You had some great. That first drive made that guy miss. Jumped over that corner, made him look bad. But, but also, but also look around, guys. Proud of you. Love you to death. We're getting better. We gotta hey. Now we got to take care of our bodies. That was a physical football game. I'm proud of you guys. There's a hell of a football team in here if we'll keep doing it, okay? There's one hell of a football team in here, but we got a lot of work to do. Family on three, one, two, three, family! From Auburn, on to Arkansas, then Alabama. An A-list of opposition keeps coming at you in the SEC. That's one gritty win down, yet another fierce competition awaiting up north on the horizon.